I'm Mike Yuyak. I love to try new things, and I've had culinary adventures all around the world, as well as right at home. I've had really wonderful food, as well as some really horrible food. I'd like to share some of my adventures with you, and we'll see if I have what it takes to fix whatever goes wrong. This is Recipe Redemption. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Recipe Redemption. I'm pretty excited for today's installment in the market of mystery because I got a big meaty package in the mail. And what was in it is pretty nuts. What was it? Nuts. These nuts! That's right. Today, we're doing Rocky Mountain oysters. In Spain and Portugal, they're known as uh, criadillas. In Mexico, huevos del toros. Here in the U.S., if we refer to them at all, they're called bull fries or cowboy caviar, prairie oysters, swinging sirloin, beef tender groins, dusted nuts, the family jewels, or most commonly, Rocky Mountain oysters. We're going to be talking about testicles. <clears throat> Why we started eating them, how to prepare them, how they taste, and yes, why we might consider continuing to eat them. The Romans used to eat these by the ton, uh, believing them to be good for male fortitude and as general aphrodisiacs. Uh, testicles also referred to as testes. Um, and uh, in Latin, the word testes, with an I, uh, means witness. In ancient Rome, it was the custom for men to place one hand on a testicle when taking an oath in court. You can read into that what you want, but more generally in the U.S., uh, Rocky Mountain oysters or beef testicles were eaten primarily by cowboys uh, since they'd have an overabundance of them in the spring as they castrated the new calves, uh, which makes a steer less aggressive and easier to handle in general. Waste not, want not. Although more sophisticated, genteel preparations have since been developed, the cowboys would often just throw the freshly separated testicles right on the coals of the campfire and then fish them out a few minutes later and eat them piping hot. Uh, there are even festivals devoted to the Rocky Mountain oyster, perhaps the most famous or infamous of which is the Testicle Festival in Clinton, Montana. You can practically eat your weight in the stuff if you so choose. I think there's actually an eating contest at some point, um, but they're available the entire weekend. When I visited there a few years back, I think I got there before the real festivities got rolling because there wasn't much on offer and I wasn't really there to separate the testicles that were still attached to their owners, if you know what I mean. Uh, which I will warn anyone who may be interested in attending the festival in person, that is in fact something that is on full display at certain points. Um, why should we eat testicles? Well, they're a great source of protein, omega-6 uh, fatty acids. Um, and again, waste not, want not. They're a part of the cow um, that is readily available. Um, it's just you don't see them that often because they're not that popular. There is sort of the ick factor. But, uh, you know, they're... But let's, take, let's, let's think about it for a minute. They're organs. They're not muscular. So they aren't tough uh, in and of themselves. They have a bit of a membrane around them, which can be a little tough, um, which is why typically they'll skin the memory, which is actually pretty easy to just peel it off, um, slice it up, and typically it's just sliced up, breaded, and fried, which we'll be trying today. Um, I have heard also that if you grill or pan sear, um, the higher heat actually causes that membrane to kind of crisp up. And so uh, we're going to try that as well, just to see uh, if, if one of these is actually tasty as... I won't really call it a steak because it's not a steak, but cooked up kind of like a steak, um, pan seared. Um, and we're just going to see what it's like. So it's it's not going to have any muscle fibers to it. Uh, it's Like I said, it's not going to get tough. But, um, you know, that sort of uh, 
they're sort of squishy. I mean, as one might imagine if one has touched a testicle in one's life. Um, they're, uh, they're, they're squishy and soft. Um, they're a glandular organ. Uh, so it's going to have that slightly spongy texture to it. Cooked, um, obviously it firms up, but it still has that sort of easy to chew mouth feel to it because it doesn't have any muscle fibers to it. So you do need to cook it quickly and relatively gently. Um, deep frying is not the gentlest way of, uh, of, of treating it, but because it doesn't spend a whole lot of time in there, as long as you don't overcook it, it should still have that sort of slightly softer, um, just, just barely chewy uh, texture to it when it's fully cooked. So let's give them a shot, see what happens. So here we go. Two noble testicles, both alike in dignity. I'm going to work on this one, set the other one aside, because I'm just going to pan sear that one. And this is going to sound bad, but I've never handled testicles before. Um, so I have no experience in skinning these. This is all an experiment. And as it turns out, the membrane on the outside is kind of like leather. I'll admit, my cleaver isn't the sharpest knife, but it's not making a dent. So, I got my boning knife. Well, Chris's, really. And you can see just how much force I'm trying to apply to this to get it to cut through at all. And that's a sharp, sharp knife. But then I realized that with a little coaxing, you can basically just peel the membrane off. As long as you have a starting point, you just sort of very carefully peel it away. And given enough time, you can remove it all the way around. Just like so. See, wasn't that easy? <clears throat> so anyway, now it's time to slice our testicle into medallions. I'd say probably about quart, quarter of an inch thick. Time to cook. So I just have a pan with some hot oil and I'm gonna throw that whole testicle in. And as it turns out, pan searing does not quite crisp up that membrane the way that I like. It looks a little alien right now, but we're still going to try it. I think grilling will probably end up being the better option for this. As for the fried ones, I've set up just a standard fry station, seasoned my flour with some kosher salt. And I really want to taste just what these testicles taste like, so I'm not adding any other seasoning. And I'm going to try, once I separate these medallions out, I'm going to try and maintain a sort of dry hand, wet hand technique for breading these. Uh, you typically want to try to avoid going back and forth um, between the dry and the wet stuff with uh, any given hand. Because what you're going to end up with is, a, is club hand. You're going to end up with uh, this, this sort of a sticky batter semi-permanently <laughs> adhered to your fingertips. Um, you're still going to get a little of that uh, over time eventually but uh, you won't get it right away and it's a little bit more convenient and then just throw these one or two at a time into some hot oil and I would recommend that you let your oil get a little hotter than I did this is a little too cool place on paper towels and season here we are um... Yeah, so some lessons learned. Uh, pan searing, not the, grace, not the greatest for a whole Rocky Mountain oyster. Um, it just doesn't get the sear necessary to really crisp up that membrane. You really do need to grill it on a hot grill. Then it'll crisp up, and from what I understand, it's, it's kind of like having a layer of chicharron on the outside of this, um, outside of this testicle. Um, but... So it does make it sliceable, at least. 
uh, has firmed up quite a bit. Quite a bit. Hmm. <laughs> the membrane is very chewy, so can't re can't really recommend this preparation unless you grill it. Um, I may try it again at some point if I get my hands on another set and see what it's like with it uh, grilled, if that actually crisps up the way that they say it's supposed to. Flavor-wise, it's very mild. And then once I actually tuck the chewy bit to the side, the actual meat of the Rocky Mountain Oyster is, uh, it's not quite pate-like, but it's very smooth. Very light in flavor. Actually needs more salt. That's a... Uh, Try one of the fried ones. Mm. Mm. It's a little more of the flavor that I remember. So, the breading gives it a little bit of extra toastiness. I actually seasoned this, so uh, there is actually more flavor overall. The meat has kind of a, it, it's an organ, so it does have a slightly organy flavor, a little bit um, sort of iron rich, livery kind of flavor. And I know for some people that's not a selling point, but it's not bad. Um, and definitely the ones that I've had before were way overcooked because um, they were even chewier than this. Uh, and not as much flavor. I didn't even throw any uh, garlic powder or onion powder or anything like or pepper. Just salt. Mm. It is actually quite tasty. Yeah, I know they called it a Rocky Mountain Oyster because it sort of looks like an oyster when raw. Um, but it doesn't taste like one. It doesn't have the texture of one. Once you've cooked it, it doesn't have the texture of an oyster. But if you're going to treat one like an oyster, why don't we go all the way and make a Rocky Mountain Oyster? Oh, boy. Yeah coleslaw, red pepper remoulade, oop, that's oozing out the front, didn't realize that, <clears throat> Tabasco, on a hoagie roll. Oh, yeah. Oh, that is a little bit of all right. The uh, red pepper remoulade, which I have made on a couple of occasions on this channel, but if you want a reminder of how to make that, it's super easy. I'll post that down below. But uh, the sort of uh, vegetal earthiness of the red pepper remoulade and the, the richness of it, because it is kind of like a mayonnaise, basically, um, And the bright crispness of the coleslaw kind of couples, complements the organiness of the fried uh, Rocky Mountain oysters. Mm. That little bit of hot sauce and the vinegar from the hot sauce too. It gives it that bright acidic note that it kind of needs. 
that's fantastic. If it wasn't for the fact that it was actually kind of difficult to get a hold of Rocky Mountain Oysters here in Seattle, um, I would probably make this more often because that's downright good. So what do you think? Do you have any uh, ideas or things that you've already actually tried for uh, preparing Rocky Mountain Oysters in unique ways that maybe would help expand its appeal into sort of mainstream culinary culture? Let me know down in the comments below. And as always, I'm uh, encouraging everyone to subscribe to the channel, like this video, and uh, definitely hit the bell down below for notifications so you know when I post another video like this one. So, until next time, I'm going to finish my lunch, and I'd like to thank you for watching. I'm Mike Uyakin. We'll see you next time on Recipe Redemption.